We play and call it work. In this episode, we're going to go over a very basic turn. And by basic turn, I mean we're going to cover the movement and the shooting phase in some more detail. Now, if you've ever played the game before, you're going to notice that I'm going to be leaving out several rules, especially any universal special rules. So when you're watching this, don't be like, oh, he forgot about the end, they shall know no fear for the Space Marines, or the fleet for this thing, or whatever else it happens to be. I'm ignoring all these special rules to keep this video simple. And as usual, of course, we'll be having the second video in the Mini Wargaming Vault, which will be a more extensive battle report showcasing the stuff that you learn in today's video. Let's jump right into it. To help us demonstrate the movement in the shooting phase, I've got a couple volunteers here. I've got a unit of Space Marines armed with a few different weapons. We've got bolters, we've got a flamer, we've got a missile launcher, and the sergeant even has a plasma pistol. On the other side, we've got some orc boys. These are shooter boys, so they're all armed with shooters. Of course, we have a knob in the middle leading the whole group. You can ignore the rest of the stuff you see on the board. We're only going to be demonstrating what's happening between these two squads. For this game, we are going to assume that the Space Marine player has the first turn. So let's run through what their turn would look like. The first thing that you always do in a turn is resolve any effects that are at the beginning of the turn. Now, we're not doing any of those, so we don't have to worry about it. Next, we go into the movement phase. In the movement phase, you move or choose not to move every single unit that you have on the table. This is simple, we only have one unit. To move a unit, you simply use the measuring tape to measure how far the unit can move up. The majority of normal models can move six inches. If it is a specific unit type, such as jump infantry, or it's a vehicle, or it's a bike, it'll have its own rules as to how far it can move. But a lot of regular infantry are going to be moving six inches. So their weapon profile, or their character profile, doesn't even show you how far they move. It's the unit type that determines this. We're not going to worry about all of that right now. Just assume that everything can move six inches. If I want to move this unit up, all I have to do is put my measuring tape down. So the six is at the edge of the base and I move each model up to six inches forward. I do not have to move the full distance. I could move one inch, five inches, six inches, or even zero inches. But just remember that if you measure from the front of the model, that at the end of it, the front of the model should be at the front of the measuring tape. It would be incorrect to do this, where I measure and I put the six inch thing at the front of the model, and then I put the model with the back to the end there. Because in essence, we actually move six inches plus the length of the base, which in this case, would be another full inch. On top of that, when you have certain models with weapons that don't like to move, this missile launcher, for example, if it moves, it has a harder time shooting, as we'll see in just a moment. So you can elect to have this model stay still. This is on a model by model basis. So the rest of the unit could move forward and that unit or that model can stay still. But remember that you must maintain unit coherency whenever you're doing this movement. So even though he didn't move, you'll notice he's still within two inches of another one of the Space Marines. On top of that, we have this piece of terrain right here that is classified as difficult terrain. If the Space Marines wanted to move over that piece of difficult terrain, then what you would have to do is roll for difficult terrain. That is done by rolling two dice and picking the highest number of the two, in this case, four. Now that four represents the maximum distance that this unit can move even if they're not personally moving through the difficult terrain. Every model is then limited to moving only four inches. We're not gonna move that piece of difficult terrain right now. We're just gonna move like this. Normally at this point we would have the psychic phase, but not only are we skipping it in this video, and none of the models here on the board are psychers. And so even if there was a psychic phase, it would immediately start and then end because we have no psychers. So we are going to now jump into the shooting phase, which will be the final phase that we're going to cover in this video. In the shooting phase, each unit can, if it wants to, fire any of its weapons, as long as they are in range of whatever target they are firing at. Every weapon has a profile. We're not going to go into all the details of all the different types of weapons that we have. We're going to go into the basics, including covering some blasts, templates, and scattering, and rapid fire, things like that. The things that you're going to commonly see in the game. For example, a regular Space Marine has a bolter, or a bolt gun, whichever you want to call it. A bolter has a rapid fire profile, 
Rapid fire means that if it is within half of its distance or range to its enemy target, it can fire twice instead of one time. In order to do this, all we have to do is measure the distances. A bolter has a maximum range of 24 inches. So if we take our measuring tape and put the 24 at the end of the model, remember we're not measuring from the gun itself, we're measuring from the model, so the edge of the base, we can see that that 24 inches brings us easily into all of the orcs on the other side. But the real question is, are we within 12 inches? And the answer to that is no. So we are not in rapid fire range, and so they will only get to fire one shot each. Now in the shooting phase, you start off by starting with your unit that you want to fire, declaring its target, and then going weapon by weapon through everything that the unit has. And in this case, let's start with the bolters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, models in the unit have bolters. So we'll be able to fire all seven of those guns. All seven of them are in range of the orc boys, and so we get to fire seven shots. We do this by taking seven dice and rolling them, and comparing it to our target number. I actually did a really good roll right there. The target number is based on the ballistic skill of the model. Now each of these models has a ballistic skill of four, and using the table that is in the, in, in the Warhammer 40k rulebook, I find out that I need to roll three or higher. An easy way to remember it with ballistic skill is just subtract it from seven. So ballistic skill of four, seven minus four is three. Ballistic skill of two, seven minus two would be five. You'd have to roll five or higher. So in this case, six out of seven of my shots hit. This one is a miss. So I will remove that. It's usually easier just to remove the misses so that you know how many shots you have that have gotten through. Pick up those dice and now we roll to see if the shot manages to wound the intended target. To do this we, che we check the strength of the weapon and compare it to the toughness of the enemy. In this case a bolt gun has a strength of four and an orc boy also has a, a toughness of four. When we look at the chart a strength equal to toughness means we need to roll four or higher to wound it. So even though we have six hits, not all of those are actually going to wound the orcs. We roll a four or higher to wound it. In this case, I rolled poorly. Four of them were less than four, and they are misses. So we have two wounds in total. Once we have these wounds, we allocate them. In other words, we put them on the models that are closest to the models that we're shooting. Once again, looking at the closest to closest. In this case, it'll be this orc boy and this orc boy, with this one being the closest. Now we're gonna get into something interesting here, which is called our saves. There are three general types of saves, armor saves, invulnerable saves, and cover saves. We're not gonna worry about invulnerable saves right here. An armor save is just representative of how armored the character is, or the model is, to see if it can, even though it was wounded, kind of deflect it using its armor. A cover save is the same idea, except instead of armor blocking the wound, it is some sort of cover, such as this piece of terrain. Now the orcs don't have good armor. Their armor is a six plus armor. In other words, they'd have to take these two dice and roll six or higher, well in the case of a six sided die, is just rolling a six, to stop the wound from going through. But we have a further complication. Every weapon has a certain armor penetration capability. These can go from nothing, so AP dash, all the way to AP1, which ignores everything. Essentially what you do is if the armor penetration of the weapon is equal to or lower than the armor save of the model, that model does not get to roll an armor save. In other words, the weapon ignores their armor. The AP, or armor penetration value, on a bolter is five. And since the armor save of these orcs is a six, they would not get to roll that six plus armor save. However, this one orc is blocked by this cover. And this debris provides a four plus cover save. Now cover saves we can discuss in more detail elsewhere. It's quite possible that you and your opponent might agree to different cover saves. But for the argument of this video, we're gonna say this, this provides a four up cover. So this model here has a four up save and this model has no saves. But we have two wounds going through and he is the nearest one. So we allocate a wound to him and we roll to see if he stays alive. If he stays alive, then we would keep allocating wounds to him until he is dead or until we run out of wounds. So let's roll our first one. Can we roll a four plus for this poor orc to stop him with the cover? And the answer is no. So immediately he is removed as a casualty off the, off the field. If he had more than one wound, we'd have to wound him more than once. But every model here, except for the orc knob leading the group, only has one wound. So as soon as they fail one save, they are removed as a casualty. 
We still have one more wound though that gets allocated to the next nearest orc boy who is right here. Now he is out in the open, he has no cover save, and we already know that the armor penetration of the bolter is enough to ignore his armor save, so he doesn't get to roll anything and is just removed as a casualty. So in total, two orc boys were killed from this shot. Now that all the bolters have fired, we move on to the next weapon. And I can choose them in whatever order I want, but I'm going to choose the sergeant's plasma pistol. A plasma pistol only has a range of 12 inches, just like most pistols. And as you can see here, that is nowhere near those orcs. So we'll move on to another weapon. We still have the flamer and the missile launcher. Let's do the flamer. This one uses a template like this. And the way that you fire it is to place a shorter than template that is touching the model, not the weapon, but the model's base. So it can be facing whatever way you want and tries to cover as many of the target unit as possible. Obviously right here we see he's so far away that he's not gonna do any damage. And so he just does not get to do anything. Lastly, we have the missile launcher. Now the missile launcher has the blast weapon, weapon type and that is going to be a little bit more complicated. But essentially, in this case, the missile launcher actually has two profiles he can choose between. He can fire it as a single shot that has high strength and good armor penetration, or he can fire it as a blast and try to hit more than one guy. We're gonna fire it as a blast because it would be more effective in this case. The maximum range of the missile launcher is 48 inches. We already know that they're well within that range because the bolt guns, which were 24 inches, were in range. The missile launcher cannot fire it as a blast if it moved. So thankfully, we didn't move the missile launcher at all. The controlling player, in this case me, places a blast marker. Now you have to determine if it's a small or a large blast based on the weapon. The missile launcher specifically says blast. We know it's a small blast. You place it over any model where, that you can see. And what we're trying to do is cover as many models as possible. So I'm gonna place it over this guy with the blue hair because if I get a hit, it's gonna hit three guys. The next thing you do is you take a scatter die and 2d6 and two six-sided dice. And we roll these all together to see where the blast actually ends up. So when we roll this, we see that we have a 10 and an arrow pointing that way, which means the blast would scatter 10 inches that way. However, Space Marines are a little more accurate and so they get, like everybody else, to subtract their ballistic skill from how far it scatters. In this case, their ballistic skill is four, so 10 minus four is six, or basically negates this die. So it's gonna move six inches in that direction. When we put the measuring tape down and move the blast over, we find, unfortunately, that it doesn't hit any of the orcs. If it did cover some of the orcs, let's say it covers two of them, then it works just like the bolters were firing if they hit twice. So all of a sudden we'd have two wounds or two hits, sorry, that we would then roll to wound and roll armor saves just as normal. Once everybody is done shooting from every unit, we are at the end of the shooting phase. Remember, the orcs don't get to shoot right now because it is not their turn. At the end of the shooting phase, you look at every unit that suffered casualties. If they lost at least 25% of the number of models in their unit, then they must take a morale check or fall back. In this case, the orc boys had 11 models before. They lost two, that's only 22%. So they didn't lose enough models, they would have had to lose three in order to check to see if they would fall back. This concludes the Space Marines' turn. Even if we were doing the assault phase, they're too far away to actually do any assaulting. So this would work pretty much like a normal game turn, even though we skipped the psychic and the assault phase. Let's go into the orc turn to see how they retaliate. The orcs like to get up close and personal. They're very good at close combat and their weapons are usually shorter range. So they're gonna move up their six inches. You'll notice that for some of them I don't measure quite as carefully. If you don't think you're gonna move the full six inches, it usually speeds up the game just to kind of move them anyways. Another trick is to move up your front guys. And if you move everybody in the similar way that they started, then they probably moved within their six inches. These are just different ways that you can help to speed up the game. Next, we'll enter the psychic phase, but there are no psychers, so it's done. And then we go into the shooting phase. Now this unit has two different weapons. All of the orc boys have shooters, and the orc knob has a slugga. The slugga is only 12 inch range, the shooters are 18 inches. So let's start with the slugga. It is 12 inches, so we see that there are two marines right here. But let's actually go and do it the opposite way to see if it can actually affect it. Normally you wanna fire your shortest range weapons first because if there's no models within that range, you can't fire it. So let's see if there's some consequences here. Let's see if I roll high enough for the orcs to kill the, all the space marines. So we have eight models, all with shooters. A shooter is, unlike the uh, bolt gun, always fires two times. It can fire two times if you're within one inch or all the way up to 18 inches. So it is an assault two weapon. 
So they get to fire 18 shots. However, orcs are not known for their accuracy. They only have a ballistic skill of two as opposed to the four of the space marines. So they need to roll five or higher. Remember, seven minus a ballistic skill, in this case two, is five. So we need to roll fives or sixes to hit. So even though they have a lot of shots, they're gonna need it to actually hit their target. They didn't do too poorly. It looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six hits. Now we need to roll to wound. The sluggas, like the bolters, are strength four. And the space marines, like the orc boys, are toughness four. So comparing the strength of four to the toughness of four, we find that we need to roll four or higher. Remember, this is in the rule book. There's a table there that'll show you exactly what you need to roll. And they got very lucky, and five of their hits turned into wounds. However, a space marine is not just a space marine if he's not wearing his power armor. They have a very strong suit of armor that gives them a three plus save. Compare that to the orc's six plus save. That means when we roll an armor save for the Space Marines, if they roll three or higher, they ignore the wound. Now the armor penetration of the Orcs Shootas are only six. They are AP six, which means they only ignore armor saves of six plus. So the Space Marines will get to roll their three plus save. Now we would normally allocate these one at a time. So the first one will go to this guy, and then this guy, then this guy, then this guy, then this guy. But since they're all gonna be rolling three plus saves, it speeds up the game just to roll them all together and take all the fails from the nearest guys. In some cases, you're gonna to wanna to do these one at a time, but here, we're just gonna do them all at once. Oh, looks like out of the five rolls, three of them were successful and two of them were not. So we have two casualties on the Space Marine side, which will be the two nearest Space Marines. Now we move on to the other weapon in the Orc Boys group, which is the Slugga, wielded by the Knob which is only 12 inches. Remember before we said that usually it's better to roll with your first ones, your closest ones first, because the 12 inches only comes up to here. So that slugger is out of range, which means it will not be able to fire. Another interesting thing that could happen is if you are in range and you fire multiple shots and you kill enough guys that the ones that you're getting to are out of range. For example, let's say that these shooters were actually only 12 inches in range. Well, 12 inches brings us back to this line of Space Marines and not the ones at the very back. And so if they did enough damage that they kill all five of these Space Marines plus more, those extra wounds would be lost because you can't kill models that are further than the range of your weapons. And in case you're wondering why I didn't worry about cover saves for these Space Marines, is because if you have more than one save available to you, in this case, this Sergeant would have a three plus armor save and a four plus cover save, you only take your best one. You do not stack multiple saves. It's the end of the shooting phase, we check for casualties. The Space Marines only took two casualties out of the 10 models that were there. That's only 20% loss. So that is not enough for them to have to take a morale check. So now it is the end of the Orc turn. Let's go back to the Space Marine turn one more time just to practice a little bit more. Let's start with the movement phase. In this case, I want this Flamer to get close, but he's gonna to try to hop over the difficult terrain. It could slow down his whole unit though, so hopefully I'll get lucky here. We roll two dice and we take the highest one and I rolled a piddly one inch. That means this entire unit is only allowed to move one inch. So that is the risk that you take whenever you try to use difficult terrain. And in this case, the flamer didn't even get to it. Once again, I'm gonna have my missile launcher stay still so that he's able to fire. Into the shooting phase, I'm gonna start with my sergeant's plasma pistol. It is only 12 inch range. So I wanna make sure I have somebody that I can fire at because right now he only has two orc boys in range. And I can only kill one with it. But if I fired with my bolt guns first and killed those two, then he wouldn't have any targets. The sergeant's ballistic skill is the same as everybody else's. He hits on a three. We're gonna ignore any of the special rules of plasma weapons. And we roll our die and we roll the two. So he was not successful in firing his weapon. Next, we're gonna fire all of our bolters. Now we have five of these left because we lost two of them to the orcs shooting. How many of these are within 12 inches? If we measure from the orc and measure to see where 12 inches is, we see that all five of them are within 12 inches of those orc boys. So they are all in rapid fire range. So they get to fire twice instead of just once each. If only the front two were with rapid fire range, they could fire twice each and the rest of them would only fire once. So we gather up our 10 dice because that's how many shots they have. They have a ballistic skill of four, so they need to roll three or higher. And let's see how well they do. Ooh, that wasn't that great a roll. I rolled lots of ones and twos. Next, we take our dice and we need to roll to see if we wound. Strength four versus toughness four, so four or higher. You can see how the game speeds up once you know all your numbers. And I got very lucky there and inflicted four wounds. Now, unfortunately for the orcs, they're all out in the open. No cover saves. So the first wound goes to this guy, 
second to this guy, third to this guy, and one more to this orc boy. Four of them are removed as casualties. Next, we will fire the missile launcher from the other Space Marine. We start by placing the blast wherever we want it, as long as it's within range and line of sight, and then we roll our scatter. In this case, he got very lucky. Even though he rolled an arrow, four minus four is zero, because remember we subtract the ballistic skill from how far it goes, and so essentially this is a direct hit. So this blast covers three of the orc boys. Now on the camera, it might look like it's covering four, but you have to look straight down, and if you look straight down, you see there's only actually covering one, two, and three. That counts as three automatic hits. From here on out, it looks just like any other thing. We look at the strength of the missile, which is four, and compare it to the toughness of the orc boys. Now you might be thinking, this is a lot of strength and toughness four. It does vary a lot in the game. It just happens that the squads I chose all have pretty much strength four everywhere. We're looking at fours to wound. Well, he doesn't get too lucky. He only gets one wound. And that wound gets inflicted to the model out front, which in this case, is an orc knob. Now an orc knob is different than the other orcs. He's much stronger. His toughness is still only four, but he has two wounds. So since one wound is inflicted to him, he is brought down from two to one wound. So he is not removed as a casualty. It is usually helpful to put a marker beside him. In this case, I use a die to mark how many wounds he has left. Some people count up. I prefer to count down. It's just easier that way. But really, it's however you want to do it, just to make sure you keep track of how many wounds he has left. At the end of the shooting phase, we now look at how many casualties the orc suffered. The wound from the knob does not count because he was not removed as a casualty. It was the other four that would count. So they lost four out of nine guys, or 44%. That is definitely equal to or higher than 25%. So they must take a morale check. We're not going to get into the huge details of morale and all the implications of it, but just needless to say, to take a morale check, you roll two dice, and you need to get equal to or less than the leadership of the group that you're rolling it for. The orc boys have a leadership of seven, so they need to roll seven or less on two dice. And they did. They rolled a six, so they do not run away, and they will stay to fight another day. There's one last thing I should point out for the shooting phase. This is rather important. A unit can elect to run instead of shooting. This is quite simple. All you have to do is say, this unit is going to run. You roll a single d6, and that is how far it is allowed to move, in this case, two inches. This will allow the unit to get closer to whatever they're trying to get to. This is very useful in the case of where you don't actually have any targets to shoot, maybe you don't even have any close combat weapons, or any shooting weapons, and you just want to get closer to the enemy. But there are consequences of shooting, or running, sorry. First off, obviously, you can't shoot. Another thing is you will not be able to charge if you've decided to run, so you have to weigh it carefully what you're going to do. That's all we're going to cover in this video. I don't want to get into every detail possible with the movement and shooting phase because it can seem a little overwhelming, when really it's just a lot of the details from how you interact with terrain or all the special scenarios that come up. That's what the main rule book is for. But now you know the basics of how you move, how you deal with difficult terrain, how you shoot, you use different kinds of weapons. You're going to see more of those types of weapons. There's all sorts of them in Warhammer 40k. You should check out the weapons section of the main rule book to see all the different types of things that can fire. It's actually quite interesting and quite tactical. So now at this point, you can go ahead and click the link below to go and watch the battle report associated with this, which will be a nice simple skirmish to really show off movement and shooting and all the different scenarios that can come in multiple units and how they would interact. So go ahead and click that. Remember, it's for the Mini Wargaming Vault. If you're not a Vault member, the Mini Wargaming Vault is the place where we put our paid membership videos, extra battle reports, painting tutorials, tons and hundreds of painting tutorials, behind the scenes, uh, all those extra specials that we put out, that is in the Mini Wargaming Vault. And by becoming a Vault member, you help to support us in making these types of videos. This is how we make the majority of our money. YouTube advertising just, it doesn't even cover the cost of the lease of the building that we are in. We need our Vault members in order to continue making videos such as this and pay all our employees, build these studios, all these models, everything else like that. So if you enjoy this series, please subscribe. You can try it out for free for seven days by clicking on the link in the video description below to go and check out the actual battle report. You get instant access to the rest of everything that's in the vault, even during the trial. If you decide you don't want it, it's not for you. You can easily cancel. It really doesn't cost that much. You can cancel at any time and get, even get a refund of your last payment in the past 30 days. So go ahead and try it out. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more How to Place 40K 7th Edition and happy wargaming.